Despicable Me! Hi everyone, in June 2022 we had a two week stay at the Planet Hollywood Cancun Hotel which is in Costa Mujeres in Mexico. We absolutely love this hotel and there are so many options with the restaurants and the buffets, places where you can grab a snack. So what we thought we'd do is chuck all of the different food options that we experienced here in one video so that you can have a little look and if you're going here maybe it'll give you a bit of an idea of where you want to head to first. So what we're going to do is start with breakfast and the SoCal Buffet is open from 7am until 11am. There is a little bit of a booth here where you can queue up to check in and be shown to your table. I absolutely love the theming in here. It was lots of black and white retro photos of films and it had a really modern feel. All around the buffet there were so many options. So in the middle here there was like yogurts and fruits that you can just go up and help yourself to. There was also a smoothie bar as well over here. The bakery section was changed up every day. So Jimmy really liked the donuts and some days there were like glazed donuts, some days there were sugar donuts and they did mix up which pastries were on offer each day. There was also a hot buffet section at the back with all of your typical things that you would see on a breakfast, sausages, bacon, hash browns, and then your fresh veg there as well. So there was spinach, mushrooms, tomatoes. There's also some random stuff, so you'll see there was like beef stew, there was like fajitas some days. I can't say we ever tried them at the breakfast, but the option is there. And this live station here was my absolute favourite. It was a omelette station, so here you'd pick which fillings you'd like. So I'd have a, like bacon, tomatoes, mushrooms, and then they would sort of make it into like an egg burrito. So they'll cook up the filling, add in some cheese, some salt and pepper, and wrap it all up in the egg. If there's one thing I'd recommend, it would be getting one of these omelettes. There were sections in there where you could help yourself to juices, but there is also wait staff that will go around and ask if you want any hot drinks or juices bring into the table. All in all, we really highly rated the breakfast here. We particularly liked getting here early when it was nice and calm and quiet, but to be honest, even when we went at peak times, it never felt so busy and the tables are really nicely spaced out as well. Another option, what you can do here is ask for a to-go box. So there was a couple of days I'd head down to the pool really early and then the lads would box me up some fruit and things to bring down to the pool later on. Next up, we're going to show you the room service breakfast. So this can be ordered through the TV in your room and they only offer this in the morning. They do also have an all day dining option for the room service and we'll show you that a little bit later on in this video. We only did the room service on one occasion and on this occasion we ordered a bakery basket. So they just bring up a selection of pastries, I'm presuming from the buffet. Uh, we also ordered a cooked breakfast and some cereal and yogurt. The food, as you would expect with room service, it doesn't come up piping hot and maybe they aren't pastries that we would select, but it was really nice to have the option. But what we found is in future days, we actually preferred to go down to the buffet and maybe get a to-go box if we were planning on eating breakfast in the room. I just found that that was a little bit less wasteful where we could pick items that we sort of actually wanted. Next up is the Overtime Sports Bar and we came here for lunch on quite a few occasions and I'm going to call this a little bit of a hidden gem just because it's not located near the pools or the places where you are mostly spending time during the day and we found at lunchtime it was pretty quiet in here. It's also the place where you're going to find the only free pool table that we know of at Planet Hollywood. We loved the theme in here, there was lots of sports memorabilia but sort of linked to movies as well. There were so many things on this menu that we wanted to try and maybe that's why we came here so much at lunchtime but we genuinely enjoyed all of the food that we had here. So the first thing we tried were the chicken wings and they have a few different sort of flavours for the sauce that you can have on there. You'll see they are quite small portions but they were perfect sort of bar snack sizes. This here is the fish and chips and they were actually really nice pieces of fish that was included there. Again, it's not the hugest portions, but it was just the right sort of size for what we were after for lunchtime. And Jim really enjoyed this. We also tried the Philly cheese steak. So it was sort of little thin strips of steak along with peppers and onions in like a chia batter bread roll. It was really nice. It doesn't look like much when I've opened it up, but there was some really good flavours in there. On this next occasion, Jimmy decided to get some wings as an appetiser and he had a burger for the main. He said the burgers are sort of very similar to other burgers that you get across the resort, but they were really nice. Jim had the grilled cheese with tomato soup dipper as an appetiser, and this was so good. The sort of tomato soup it's like a tomato mascarpone sauce it was so nice and absolutely perfect to go with the grilled cheese 
I had the Caesar salad uh, for lunch this time. This maybe wasn't as typical a Caesar salad as what I would usually have in terms of like the sauce and the flavours, but it was still nice and it was something fresh. We came on another occasion whilst waiting for a table at another restaurant and we decided just to go for a bit of an appetizer uh, while we were waiting. We got a table straight away. Jimmy had a hot dog, I had some onion rings and Jim had some loaded wedges and they were great. It kept us going while we were waiting around an hour for a table at another restaurant and this is something that I really would recommend doing if you've also been told to wait for a table. Next up is another real favourite of ours and one that we'd highly recommend at lunchtime and it's the Gusto restaurant which is located in between the Lazy River and the Splash Park. I would say this is one of the only places you're going to get a proper table service meal at lunchtime. Now I'm not going to show this for every restaurant but just to show you the kids menu this is the same menu that you will get in every restaurant across the resort whether it is lunch or dinner time. So you can see there is all the classics on there for the children but of course the children can also order from the adults menu if they are a little bit more adventurous. The menu at Gusto was a bit smaller at lunchtime and it was different to the menu that we saw at dinner time so I would recommend coming for both. There is still plenty of options on here though with the pastas, risottos, the main courses, the pizzas. On this occasion Jimmy did order from the kids menu and he had a classic nuggets and chips which he really enjoyed. Jim and I both decided to go for the bruschetta as the starter. It was nice, it wasn't something where I would rush back to go and order it again but we did enjoy it and it was nice to have something fresh. I had the chicken parmigiana, excuse my pronunciation, for lunch this day and it had really good flavours. I really enjoyed this and this was one of my favourite meals that I had out here. Jim had the pork roulade and he also says this was one of his best meals that he had out here. And spoiler alert, all three of his best meals were all at this restaurant. Next up is one of the most popular options at lunchtime on property, which is Guy's Burger Joint. This is located opposite Gusto, right next to the splash pad in the kids area. Guy's Burger Joint is literally what it says on the tin. It serves burgers, it serves fries, and you can get some soft drinks there as well. You could argue it is quite a limited menu. They've got the four burgers listed on there. They do also do a veggie burger as well, which isn't shown on the menu. Burgers are cooked fresh to order so you can be waiting about 20-30 minutes after you've placed your order. What they'll do is give you a number where you can come and call back later or if you wait there and wait for the number to be called out. Or another option is to send just one member of your party down there and then you can all head down later to grab your burger a bit later on. I really like that they are cooked fresh to order because it does mean that when they're coming out they're coming out hot and the burgers here for me were faultless. They tasted amazing. I really like the sauce that they use, the seasoning on the fries. If you like a good burger then I promise you won't be disappointed with guys. Jimmy's favourite was the one with the onion rings and the barbecue. I personally like just the cheesy one. Jim did try a veggie burger while we were out there. He wasn't dead keen on it, but with loading it up with a bit of mayonnaise, he did manage to eat it, so nothing went to waste. Next up is the Shores, which is the only buffet you're going to get at lunchtime. This is located next to the main pool and also next to the bridge that will take you over to the beach. The main buffet where they'll serve breakfast and dinner is not open at lunchtime. So if you are looking for a buffet for lunch, this is the only place you're going to find it. Indoor seating, I would say, is limited and it does get busy down here. So on this occasion, we came for opening and you'll see inside this room, it's not the biggest buffet. It is just this one little hall here. There were quite a few fresh options here. Really enjoyed the guacamole and chips. They also served fish and there was live cooking stations where you could get some pasta cooked up or some meat. Plenty of pizza options as well. For me, we came on two occasions and this wasn't one of my favourite meals that we had here. I much preferred the other buffet. Although there were a lot of options, there definitely wasn't as many as what you're going to get at the other buffet. I also found when we came in the middle of the lunchtime service on one occasion, that it was quite chaotic in the room and it was very very busy so if you were planning on coming here i would recommend going as early as you can just so that you can get an indoor seat cool off in a bit of ac and have a bit more of a relaxed experience all in all if we had to give it a rating you'll see jim and i differ a little bit he would go for more of an 8 out of 10 whereas i'd give it maybe a 5 out of 10 but jim does agree with me that it was chaotic on that occasion when we came sort of mid-service 
One thing that Jimmy really enjoyed is there was a really good selection of puddings, fresh fruits, fruit tarts, churros. That was actually one thing that we really did enjoy there. If I had to compare all of those options that we've had for lunch so far, I certainly would prefer to go to Gusto, the sports bar or Guy's Burger over the buffet. The one positive of going to a buffet though is if you've got lots of fussy people in your family, you're guaranteed to get something there that everyone's going to enjoy. Next up, we're going to go back to Gusto, but just to that little window next to it where they do pizzas to go. They do also do some pizzas to go next to the Shores Buffet as well, but we never tried that place to get a to go pizza. The day we decided to get the pizza was our beach day, reason being that we could bring them all down to the beach and enjoy them with a bit of a view. And we ordered a couple of meat pizzas and one just cheese and tomato pizza. Overall, the cheese and tomato pizza was our favourite. It was quite a flowery base. The pizzas were okay. They weren't something where I would say you need to rush down or make sure to get one, but they absolutely served a purpose of wanting a bit of pizza on the beach. Next up, we're moving to some of the evening options at the a la carte restaurants. First up, we're going to go to one of the most popular ones, which is Sunset Strip Steakhouse. The theming in here was absolutely beautiful. We're going back to those black and white pictures, sort of the classic style. And the tables here were so spaced out and they felt very luxurious. The menu here is very much what you'd be expecting from a steakhouse. Lots of options there. Nice that there were different cuts of steaks as well with a few options there on the sides and an option as they do in all restaurants where you can enhance the experience for a bit of an upgrade. Just to let you know, we never did this on any of the occasions, so we cannot comment on what the upgrades were like. But this was one of the vouchers we saw on one occasion, just to give you an idea on price. Whilst we were waiting for the food to come out, they did bring out some bread and butter. I don't know how to explain the flavour of this butter, but it wasn't to my taste. For the starter, I had this sort of Caesar salad roll and Jim had the onion rings. Jim really enjoyed the onion rings and it was a really big portion. For the steak, I had the New York strip with some vegetables and Jim had the filet with some loaded potatoes. Jimmy had the ribs here with some waffle fries and he really enjoyed this meal. Me and Jim ordered some peppercorn sauce. You can see there it is quite watery. But it was okay. All in all, I described this as a good steak from the UK, but a bad steak from the USA. And if you've eaten steaks in both countries, you'll probably know exactly what I mean by that. One of the highlights for him was this creme brulee, and he really did enjoy that. It was a big portion, but he did really enjoy the puddings that were served at this restaurant. This is one of the most popular restaurants, so it is one I would recommend getting there for opening if you can. I have seen people post that they've had to wait a couple of hours to get a seat here. For me, there are other restaurants which will show you that I enjoyed more, but if you are there and you're fancying a steak, then that's the place where you want to head to. We are now headed to the Sutra restaurant, which is located right next to the Sunset Strip. This is the Indian restaurant that you'll find on site. And they've gone all out in here again with the theme in and it did have a really nice feel in there we tried quite a few of the starters on this menu the pakoras chicken tikka samosas for the mains we tried the butter chicken the curry and the korma as you can see they've got the side dishes there for the rice the naan breads and raita on this occasion when we came they brought out the poppadoms and the dips here these were more like sort of little poppadom nachos i don't know how else to describe them but the dips were really tasty he did say one of them was spicy or two of them were spicy, but I don't remember it actually tasting that spicy. This is the samosa, which I described it sort of came out more like a pasty, but it tasted absolutely delicious. And I had this on both occasions we came and really enjoyed it. This is the chicken tikka, which the lads really did enjoy. This here was the chicken curry. It was really nice. There was a sort of a hint of lemongrass in there. Jimmy had the butter chicken, which I would describe tasted more like a UK tikka masala and Jim had the madras, which he really enjoyed. The naan breads were absolutely delicious. They came out really warm, really fresh, and we cannot fault our first experience of this restaurant. It was absolutely beautiful, and we really enjoy Indian food anyway, and we would highly rate this as a good Indian. This was one of the only places we were actually given a menu for the dessert. On this occasion, I had some ice cream, and Jim had the coconut burfi. When he first tried it, he wasn't dead keen, but as time went on, he really did enjoy this. We came to Sutra for a second experience after our first one was so good. And this was the occasion where we did have to wait an hour to get a table and we popped next door to the sports bar. On our second experience, you could tell it was a generally very busy night across the resort. And we were waiting quite a long time to place an order 
and for starters to come out. The food was still good though. We did enjoy it. Even though we didn't get the poppadoms, we still had really enjoyed the food that we did have. It was just a really long wait. On this occasion, I had the same as Jimmy with the butter chicken, and that was by far the best curry that I tasted there. Jim went for the korma, and you can see there from the colour, it looks a bit more like porridge. He wasn't the best keen on this curry. And I would say if you enjoy a korma like we would have in the UK, then you'd probably be a bit disappointed with the korma that you'd get at this restaurant. Next up, we're going to East, which is the sushi and tapenyaki bar. So they do have two options here. And first of all, we're going to talk about the tapenyaki. One of the highlights here for us was to see the Cobra Kai Gi from the Karate Kid movie. So if you're a big fan of the films or the TV show, definitely head there for that. They have lots of different tapenyaki stations. For memory, I think there was around 10 all dotted around the edge of the restaurant. To start, they bring you out sushi. That's the only option for the starter. Us as a family isn't the biggest fan of sushi, but we did actually really enjoy this. In terms of the tapenyaki show, I would say if you've done other tapenyakis, then you may be a little bit underwhelmed with this. But if you haven't done a tapenyaki before and you want to experience it, then it is worth booking. It was quite bizarre how the food came out. So we all got the rice and then a bit later on, they cooked the rest of the meats and vegetables. We all caught a little bit of broccoli in our mouths, which is Jim's superpower. Me and Jimmy aren't the best at it. It was a little bit of fun, but there wasn't as much interaction with the chef as what we've experienced at other tapenyaki shows. Shows. Now your options here are either beef, fish, chicken or a combination of all three and they take that order from you when you sit down. So you can see here Jim had a combination of all three. In terms of the flavours of the food here it was okay but what I would recommend is go into the a la carte part of the restaurant rather than the tapenyakis and the quality was much better. Now the big thing here is you do have to book. If you're star class you can book in advance but if you're regular, then you need to queue up. I would recommend at seven for bookings to open at eight o'clock. Otherwise, you're not going to get a table. Next up is the a la carte part of the restaurant. And this isn't one you have to book in advance. We just turned up as the restaurant opened and were seated straight away. So for this, you're going to be ordering off a menu like you would at the other restaurants. And there is a whole host of options on here with the starters, the mains, the extras. We really enjoyed the food here. There was much more flavour than what you got in the tapenyaki. I had the spring rolls for the starter. It was quite a big portion there. You've got like four halves. And Jim ordered the gyoza, which he really enjoyed and said there were some really good flavours in there. Next up for the mains, I had the chicken teriyaki and Jim ordered the stir fry beef. There was so much flavour in this dish and a lot more flavour than what you've got at the tapenyakis. For the side dish, we ordered the special fried rice and it came out with prawns, beef, chicken. The dessert that was offered to us here was deep fried ice cream and our server highly recommended this. We thought we'd give it a go just because we've never had it before. If I'm honest, we all sort of scraped off the outside and just set the ice cream in the middle. It was okay, but I think for me, I'd go traditional ice cream. Next up, we're going to La Cochina, which is the Mexican restaurant located next to the SoCal buffet. Here is where you're going to get all of your classic Mexican dishes. Lots of options for the starters, the mains and the sides there. We only came here on one occasion and on the occasion we came we did really enjoy the food. The guacamole in particular is absolutely delightful. For the starter Jimmy and I both ordered the shrimp dish. Now this was very zesty, very zingy. If you like vinegar, lime, those sorts of flavours, then you won't be disappointed with it. Jim ordered the lamb tacos, which was quite a big portion considering this was on the starter menu. And this was by far Jim's favourite thing that we had at the restaurant. For the main, I ordered the pork tacos. Again, it was a very large portion, but there was some really good flavours in there. It was maybe just a bit too big a portion for me. Jimmy ordered the steak tacos, which came beautifully presented and he really enjoyed his meal. Jim ordered the potato fritters which was actually quite a smaller portion, but he was nicely full from his starter and did really enjoy the dish. We also enjoyed the puddings that were on offer here. The one that I had tasted like a roasted marshmallow. I don't know how else to describe it. Jim tried the classic Mexican flan and he wasn't sure at first, but he did really enjoy it. Overall, we did really enjoy the food here, but because we had lots of Mexican dishes at other places throughout the stay, that was the only reason why we didn't revisit. Next up, we're heading back to Gusto, but this time for the dinner service. So we've already visited there for lunch. We came on two occasions for the evening meals. 
So there is quite a few options here, but from the starter, we've tried the arancini and the soup. Jimmy's had pepperoni pizza times two off this menu. I tried the lasagna from the pastas and from the mains. Jim tried the lamb and the steak and I had the chicken with the angel hair pasta. So this is the arancini dish here. We've had arancini a couple of times in the past and we did really enjoy this, particularly the sauce that it came in was really rich. And this is Jim's steak dish that he ordered with the mashed potato and the gravy. This was one of his favourite meals. It was cooked very well and there was lots of flavour to the dish. I had the lasagna on this occasion and it was a much saucier lasagna that I would maybe have in the UK, which I really enjoyed. I love a dish with loads of sauce on it, so it was perfection. And you can see here from that cheese pool, Jimmy was very happy with his pepperoni pizza. Jim tried the tiramisu for the dessert on this occasion. He'd never had it before so, and he's not a fan of coffee, but he did actually really enjoy this dessert. We came to the restaurant on this occasion about 8 to 8.30 p.m. and we only had maybe a 5 to 10 minute wait. I'm not sure if that's because this is located a little bit further away than the other bars and restaurants. It just seemed a little bit quieter. However, on our second occasion, we turned up 5 10 minutes before opening and there was a bit of a queue. Luckily for us though, we still got seated straight away. On this occasion, they brought out bread before the starters came out, which we didn't have last time, with a bit of olive oil and parmesan to dip in. Handy for us, me and Jim ordered soup for the starter, so we were able to dip the bread <laughs> into the soup for that. It was nice, it was tasty, and Jimmy tried the arancini on this occasion, which he did enjoy. Jimmy's pizza came out piping hot. We could see it was freshly cooked and then brought over. I had the chicken with the angel hair pasta, which was really tasty, quite similar to what I had at lunchtime. Jim had the lamb shank with the gnocchi, which again was one of his favourite meals. He could not follow anything that we tried at the Gusto restaurant, and this would be our top recommended restaurant at Planet Hollywood. This was our last meal of the holiday, and we absolutely loved it. It was a great way to round off the two weeks. Next up, we're heading back to the SoCal Buffet. This is where we came for breakfast, it closes over lunchtime and then it's back open for the dinner service. So of course there's the exact same theming and decor that you're going to get in the mornings to what you're going to get in the evenings. We actually came to the buffet a lot more than I would have thought we would on, on this type of holiday. In the middle on the lower islands in the buffet is where you're going to get your air quotes sort of kids choices with like your pizza and nuggets and all around the edge there is lots of fresh food there is also lots of live cooking stations where you can get fish cooked to order different meats there's pastas cooked fresh to order and the pasta cooked fresh to order was one of my favorites where you can pick your sauce your type of pasta if you wanted to add in a little bit of cheese and they cook it up so it's really nice and hot in front of you I then went and got some roasted vegetables, some peppers and mushrooms, and it made an absolutely beautiful dinner. There was plenty of choices with the salad, there was different breads. I really can't complain at anything that we had in this buffet section. There was lots of food that was repeated each night, so you could get a lot of the same dishes sort of night after night. But I didn't mind that because you knew that there was always going to be something that you liked. One of our favourite meals was in this big silver pot, and that was chicken tikka masala. And when I came back to the table with it for the lads to try, they both went in and got it as well. It was as good, if not better, than the curries that we had at the Indian. <laughs> there was also lots of different ice creams, lots of puddings. Some of the puddings could taste a little bit, I suppose, mass produced, but they did have something to suit all tastes. And on the kids section, it was like Halloween. They had little tubs with sweets, with sweets that you could take away, with M&Ms that you can chuck on top of your ice cream. There really is something for everyone there. Next up is the room service, but for the all day dining options. We did this on a couple of occasions and we did really enjoy the food. As you would expect with room service, it didn't come up piping hot, but the quality was really good. We also loved this for when we landed after a really long travel day, just to be able to unpack everything in the room while we were waiting for the food to be delivered. Room service is included for all people that are staying at Planet Hollywood. We just tipped the people that bought up the food. All the options you can see on screen were available to everyone staying at Planet Hollywood, but there was that little section at the bottom that was Star Class exclusive with some fancier options that of course you could only order if you were staying in a Star Class room. On this occasion we ordered some fruit, we ordered the burger, we also ordered the chicken fingers as well as the sandwich. So how this works is you place the order through the TV, you add it all to your cart 
and then when you're checking out you just stick in your room number within a few minutes someone will phone you in your room to confirm the order ask how many people are dining and give you a rough estimate for how long it's going to take for the food to come i absolutely love that this is just included as part of your all-inclusive stay I also like that this is offered all day and not just in the evenings because then if you're having a little bit of an afternoon nap you could always order some food to wake yourself up. Next up is a little Brucey bonus and that is the Fuel Coffee Co. This is where you're going to go for your coffees, your smoothies and also some really awesome snacks which is why we've included it in this video. They've also got this little section to the left where they have a selection of teas as well as some hot water so you can just go up and serve yourself if you want in a cup of tea during the day. Fuel is open from 7am until 10 or 11pm at night. None of us here are coffee drinkers so we cannot comment on how good the coffee is. The smoothies were good on one day, maybe not so good on another day, they were quite tart. We did try on here the ice cream and the gelato but as soon as we tried one of the tarts here then we were converted and we tried the fruit tarts, the strawberry tart, they had this sort of chocolate, white chocolate and raspberry tart on another day. The pastry tastes like a shortbread biscuit is how I would explain it. But this was by far the best dessert that we had on property from any restaurant or any place at all. And that's it all summed up. That is all of the food and restaurants that we tried at Planet Hollywood. We really enjoyed this holiday and we hope you do too if you're coming here. If you have any questions at all, please drop us a comment, pop us an email. We're really happy to help. Thanks for watching. Bye. So guys, it's the end of the video. So please like, subscribe and you know, do all that good stuff and see you in the next one. Bye bye.